Up until this point, we have written our Node.js application code without thinking much about the application architecture. It wasn't really important until now. But now, since our app is really starting to grow, we need to start worrying about the way we design our code architecture. And this lecture will be a brief introduction to backend application code architecture and how to structure our code. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about one of the most used backend architectures known as MVC. Okay, in this project, we are going to use a widely used and well-known architecture called as Model View Controller or MVC in short. And there are different ways of implementing the MVC architecture, some more complex than others. But we are going to implement it in a very straightforward way here. If you Google around for MVC, you might find it implemented in some other ways, but we are going to implement it in a very simple way. Now in MVC architecture, the model layer is concerned with everything about the application data and the business logic. In the last lecture, we created movie model. So defining the model and schema for that model should be done in model layer of MVC. Currently, we are doing in the server.js file, but we should be having a model layer in our code architecture. And in that model layer, we should be defining the movie model. And we are going to do that later in this lecture. Now, business logic simply means defining the functions for performing different actions on the model itself. For example, writing logics for create, update, read, and delete of a movie object in the database in our example. So in our application, we are creating a movie model. So the business logic for creating the movie, updating the movie, querying the movie from the database or deleting the movie, it should go in the model layer. Next, we have controller layer. The controller layer is responsible for handling the application request, interact with models and views and send back responses to the client. And all that is called as application logic. Finally, the view layer contains the application's user interface. So when we are building a server-side rendered website where we send the HTML, CSS and JavaScript in the response, there we also need a view layer. But if we are creating a web API like we have been doing so far in this course, there we send JSON data in the response. So there the view layer is not required. View layer is basically the presentation layer which is visible to the user. It consists of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Basically, it contains the web page which we are going to send back to the client in the response. Since we are creating a web API right now, we are not concerned about creating views yet that we will take care in the latter part of this course. So using a pattern or an architecture like this allows us to write a more modular application, which makes it way easier to maintain and scale the application as necessary. We can take it even further and add more layers of abstraction here. But in this kind of a smaller application, which we are creating, the MVC architecture is more than enough for our needs. Now, all this might sound a bit abstract, so let's try to understand MVC in context of our Node.js and Express app, which we are creating and the request and response cycle. So when a client makes a request to our Node application, that request will hit one of our routers. We define routers one for each resource. Currently, we have only one router for movies resource, but we can have multiple routers in our application. For example, we can also have routers for users, login, logout, etc. So remember that when we make a request from the client, the request will first go to the router. Now, the router takes care of delegating the request to the correct route handler function. And this route handler function will be available in one of the controllers. And again, there will be one controller for each of our resources to keep each part of the app nicely separated. Then depending on the request, the controller might need to interact with one of the models. For example, to retrieve one of the documents from the database or to create a new one. Once more, there will be one model file for each resource. After getting the data from the model, the controller then might be ready to send back a response to the client containing the data. Now, this is in case of a web API. In this case, view will not play any part because when we create a web API, we do not have a presentation layer. But in case if we want to render a website, in that case, view will be there. And in that case, after getting data from the model, the controller might pass that data to the view create a web page using HTML and that data, and then that web page will be sent in the response. In the view layer, there is usually one view template for each page. For example, we will have a view for all movies page, a view for movie details page, a view for create a new movie page, or a login page, etc. So this was a broad overview of the MVC architecture that we are going to implement in this course. Let's try to understand this architecture practically. 
So let's go ahead and let's refactor our Node.js application code a little bit to implement MVC architecture. So again, when the client will make a request to our Node.js application, first it will go to the router. Let's say the client is making a request to get all the movies in the response. So here we have the movies router. So this router will be hit. In there, we are defining some routes. And in there, we have one route for getting all the movies. So basically this route. And if you see this route is calling this movies controller. And in that movies controller, we have a route handler function called get all movies. So from the router, the control will go to the controller. Okay. And in there we have this movies controller. And there we have a request handler called get all movies, which is going to get all the movies and it is going to return it to the client. Okay, so in our Node.js application, we already have a controllers folder and in that controllers folder, we are keeping all our controllers. And as I mentioned earlier, for each resource, we will have a separate controller. Currently, we only have one resource, which is this movies resource. For that, we have a movies controller. Let's say if we also have a resource called users, for that, we are going to create another controller called users controller. Then we can also have a controller for authentication and we are going to do that later in this course. So currently what is pending here is to create a models folder where we are going to keep all our models. So what I'm going to do is in this project folder, I'm going to create a new folder and I will call it models. And inside this folder, I'm going to keep all my models. So inside this models folder, let me go ahead and let me create a new model file and I will call it movie model. And it is going to be a JavaScript file. Okay. And in this movie model file, let's go to server.js. From there, let's cut this schema. And based on that schema, we are also creating a model here. So let's cut it. And let's go ahead and let's paste it inside this movie model.js file. Okay. And since we are using this mongoose here, Let's also go ahead and let's cut that from here and let's go ahead and let's paste it inside this movie model. Okay. So now this mongoose variable should be available. Now from the server.js file from here, let's completely get rid of this test movie and also this save method. It was only for the testing purpose for testing our connection with the database and checking whether we are able to create documents in the database from our Node.js application or not. Okay. Now from this movie model, we might also want to export this movie model. So here we want to export it as default for that. Let's say module dot exports and to that let assign this movie. Now the next question is where are we actually going to use this movie model? In other words, where are we going to create query, update and delete this movie? Well, that will be done in this movies controller. So in this movies controller, let's go ahead and let's import our movie model. So for that, let's create a variable. Let's call it movie and to import it. Let's use this require function and to that let's pass the path of the movie model. So from the current directory, we want to move one directory up there. We have this models folder and in there we have this movies model. Okay. All right. Now in this movies controller, we are creating some APIs like get all movies, get a single movie, then create a movie. So in all these APIs, what we are doing is we are working with the JSON file. So in the data folder, we have this movies.json file and we are fetching movie data from this JSON file. We are creating a new movie data in this movies.json file. We are updating movie data in this movies.json file and we are also deleting data in the movies.json file. But now instead of dealing with the JSON file, now we want to create, read, update and delete movie data in the MongoDB database. So for all these APIs, I'm going to remove the logic which we have so far. So for example, from this get all movies, I'm going to remove this logic. 
then from this get movie also i'm going to remove this logic and we are going to write new logic in order to work with database okay let's do the same thing for create movie then let's also do the same thing for update movie and let's do the same thing for delete movie okay then we also don't need this check id function because now we are going to get the id from the mongodb for each movie which we create and when we try to update or delete a movie document from mongodb where the id is not present mongodb itself will give us an error so there we don't need to check the id so let's also get rid of this method from here okay and since we are not going to work with uh, movies.json file anymore i will also remove this and i will also remove this import to the file system then let's go to this movies route so for that let's open this routes folder and there we have this movies route and here at this line number six we are trying to use this check id function from this movies controller but we have deleted this function right so let me go ahead and let me comment this line here and with that let me save this file let's also go ahead and let's save this file then let's also save movies model.js file and let's also save server.js file okay so here we have an error and it says mongoose is not defined okay that's because in the server.js file also we need import to this mongoose so let me copy it from here and i will paste it here okay with that let's again save the changes so now we don't have any error and as you can see db connection is successful okay so now our code is sufficiently well refactored and now we are also using mvc architecture for our node.js application so from our next lecture we will start implementing these apis which we have inside this movies controller and there we will try to perform crud operation using these apis in the mongodb server this is all from this lecture in this lecture we learned about mvc architecture and how it works if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day